Paul Grignon is a filmmaker and this is the slideshow which is part of an essay which Paul has written and is on his Money as Debt website. Links will appear in the description. It's a 21 or 22 slide um, collection which are in flash animation and I wanted just to have them available online to refer people to. The single loan cycle shows the bank with money created as debt, with the principal created then spent with interest payments fully recycled as bank spending. In this model the principal is paid and extinguished. In a single loan cycle, interest is assumed to be paid, spent by the bank and re-earned by the borrower. Each loan is therefore self-sufficient for both principal and interest. In this scenario, there can never be an inevitable mathematical shortage of money, with which to pay both the principal and any amount of interest. The relevant question is, do the borrowers have the real-world opportunity to earn what they need when they need it? But single loan cycles do not model reality. Bank principal created and spent. Money created as debt. But the world does not consist of single loan cycles. Therefore, the concept shown in the previous illustration is a fallacy. It fails to take into account that money created as one debt can be spent, earned and lent again as existing money probably several times in succession. Some portion of the money created as debt may be permanently diverted into being lent as existing money. Principal earned. Lenders of existing money, including banks, credit unions, savings and loans, building societies, professional lenders and private personal lending. The twice lent loan cycle money creation, actual lending. Seller N, seller N is lender 2, borrower buyer 2, seller N plus 1, seller N plus X is the original borrower, lender 1. Once lender 1 is repaid, the ability to repay lender 2 on time depends on lender 1 re-lending the full amount to match the repayment schedule of lender 2. Let's just go through that again. Twice lent loan cycle, money creation, money extinguished, actual lending debt not extinguished. The original borrower earns the money, principal is paid, payment extinguishes the money. But all of this principal has previously passed through the hands of a lender of existing money, who is still demanding payment. Note that in reality there could be any amount of debt dependent on how this now extinguished principal Once Lender 1 is repaid, the ability to repay Lender 2 on time depends on Lender 1 re-lending the full amount to match the repayment schedule of Lender 2. The twice lent loan cycle. Money creation, actual lending, money extinguished. Some of the lending is impossible to pay. 
There were two debts of the same money. Only one debt can be eliminated by payment. At this moment there is a 100% shortage of principal with which to pay the existing money debt. Note that in reality there could be any amount of debt dependent on this now extinguished principal. Twice length loan cycle, slide 6, money creation, finite volume of money created as debt, principal earned by lenders, actual lending, finite volume of existing money only available as debt, an inflow and outflow model. Let us also assume that this dynamic arrives at an equilibrium in which new money becoming twice lent is balanced by lenders eventually spending instead of lending. Is this the same as a single loan cycle? A single loan cycle is self-sufficient. A money creation system consisting solely of single loan cycles could expand or shrink any amount without causing mathematically inevitable defaults and forfeiture of collateral. This model fails to explain why, in the real world, shrinkage causes defaults. Single loan cycle, principal created and spent, money created as debt, principal paid and extinguished, interest fully recycled as bank spending. Slide 8, the twice lent loan cycle money creation, principal created, actual lending, principal paid, principal owed, principal lent, principal paid, principal extinguished, principal owed, principal created, principal paid, principal owed, principal lent, principal paid, principal extinguished, principal owed. Twice lent money is a mutual dependency. Neither loan cycle is self-sufficient. The second debt of the same money requires full replacement by new money creation to prevent mathematically inevitable defaults. The new money paid to the second lender is now only payable or available to be borrowed to pay off the debt that created it. This process repeats indefinitely until the money is either spent, not lent, or until debt is defaulted on. Twice lent loan cycle, repayment schedule. Loan only, not available to be earned at this time. The residual debt arises because money created as debt is not available to be earned on time to make the scheduled payment. Slide 11, twice lent loan cycle. Whichever the case, if two debts depend on the same money, one must borrow from Peter to pay Paul, and vice versa, forever to avoid default. Perpetual debt can never decrease or even slow down. Any slowdown will cause mathematically inevitable defaults and forfeiture of collateral. Debt must never decrease. Twice lent loan cycle, slide 12. The size of this perpetual debt is the volume of money not available to be earned and repaid on schedule. Payment demanded, loan only, not available to be earned at this time. Twice lent loan cycle, Slide 13. Payment demanded on time. 
neither lender respects or is even aware of the repayment schedule of the other. There's no coordination. The parties to this mutual dependence relationship do not recognise this dependence and do not cooperate except by chance. New demand. Past debts. Neither lender has control over the demand for credit. It is natural to assume that demand for credit might rise and fall from natural, must be planned for causes. Everything in nature follows a rhythm, nothing is a static state. Reduced demand, slide 15, twice length loan cycle. But this mutual dependence of two debts on the same money cannot shrink or slow down without causing mathematically inevitable defaults, forfeiture of collateral and potential to fall into a spiral of economic collapse. Inevitable default. Twice length loan cycle, slide 16. The volume of twice length money sets a threshold of perpetual debt beyond which the supply of new money cannot shrink or slow down without causing mathematically inevitable defaults. The money supply is a perpetual debt machine. Twice length loan cycle, slide 17. It remains to be proven quantitatively where this threshold occurs. If the illustrated 100% relent scenario applies, any reduction slow down in new debt creation will immediately trigger mathematically inevitable defaults unless there exists and is available to earn a cushion of additional money that is not committed to a debt schedule. Banks buy equity and national debt. Slide 18 money created to buy equity. Equity spends money. There are two such sources. Banks can simply write checks against themselves to buy equity investments and government bonds. In both cases, just as with checks written as loans, the bank's new liability is balanced on the bank's books by the bank's new asset and the liability is nullified by being lent back to the bank as a deposit. Money created in exchange for either type of asset will probably be spent initially. Slide 19. Equities plunge when everything else does. Money created to buy equity increase national debt. Loan only increase national debt loan only not available to be owned. Equity loses. Loan only. Equity loses value, negative balance. Increase national debt. Loan only not available to be owned. Loan only not available to be earned. Equity loses value, negative balance. Increase national debt. At any time during its circulation any or all of this money may also become perpetually lent. During downturns, equity values may fall below the value of the bank liabilities spent to acquire them, putting banks in a negative position. Only national governments can reliably make up the shortfall by increasing national debt, selling more bonds to banks. The root cause, slide 20. Debt. Debt. CSA. The banking system itself is the root cause of money system instability. The concluding side is the presentation attempts to illustrate the whole picture. The concluding slide in this presentation attempts to illustrate the whole picture. Slide 21. 
1. Perpetual lending of existing money is potentially unlimited in both time and volume. Money created as a bank loan may be re-lent as existing money, an indefinite number of times for indefinite lengths of time. Interest paid on existing money loans may be lent as new principal, increasing the volume of perpetual lending of existing money. 2. Even a delay in the availability of money to pay off bank loans will result in mathematically inevitable defaults unless there is a timely creation of adequate new bank credit. 3. Every issuance of new bank credit is subject to being captured by perpetual lending of existing money, necessitating constant increase of the money or debt supply. Four, new credit spent on productive equity that pays wages has the potential to remedy the effective shortage. Money created either way may be captured by one or more perpetual lending cycles. Money created either way may be spent too late or may be too little to satisfy repayment schedules. Money available for payment on time, bank, money created, loaned, perpetual lending, spent and circulated, perpetual lending, perpetual lending, n number of times, relent over several times. money available for payment on time. The money is loaned. Into perpetual lending or it may be delayed. If the money is in these loops it is not available on time and there will be inevitable defaults. Please note, throughout this logical proof it is assumed that all interest is spent within each load cycle so that each cycle is self-sufficient for interest. This is done to simplify the explanation and focus the proof on the principle as the source of a growth imperative, independent of interest. The twice length principle dynamic would still apply if there were no interest, if there were flat fees for loans, or if interest were allowed to be paid in goods and services. Twice lent money is a bigger problem than ever before because almost all money now enters existence as debt. However, the same dynamic applies if gold coins or physical cash is twice lent, a situation that can arise once the money supply is concentrated in the hands of the powerful due to economic, parity, economic power disparity. A situation that can arise once the money supply is concentrated in the hands of the powerful due to economic power disparity. The fundamental problem is two debts of the same principle, creating a borrow from Peter to pay Paul and borrow from Paul to pay Peter perpetual debt. On top of this fundamental problem, we can add that in the real world, loan cycles will be used to dis direct at least a little bit of the interest into new principal, like rolling a snowball to make it bigger. Thus it is rational to expect that the illustrated equilibrium is probably not the real world case. In the real world the snowball of twice lent money is going to grow indefinitely. Principal created or 
work English, interest, recycled. First lender, $100 loan. The person in receipt of the $100, second lender, $100 loan. Time is money. <laughs>